Coming up next on Race Spot TV and iRacing Live, we go super truck racing as the Sox Out Racing V8 Super Truck Championship, presented by I Analyze Racing, comes to you here on Race Spot TV. Race Spot TV and iRacing Live presents to you the 2018 Sox Out Racing V8 Super Truck Championship presented by iAnalyze Racing Software here on Race Spot TV and iRacing Live. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Cisco Scaramuza alongside Paul Smith, who will be up here in the commentary box as well as making the cameras and pushing the buttons, getting everything you need to see this broadcast here this evening. And Paul back for another season, of course, kicking it off here at the historic Autodromo Carlo Jose Carlos Pace, also known as Interlagos. 15 turns, two and a half miles. Great racing track to start us off here. Oh, absolutely fantastic track to, uh, to get this season kicked off. I can't wait for this one. It's going to be an absolute stonking race. Big grid here for you today. And, uh, well, I suppose we better get into it and have a look at the, at the schedule for the season. And still plenty of, of course, we have to go through your schedule here as it comes up on screen. We got Interlagos starting us off here. And then March 24th, we head to Sonoma. Third race on the season, going to be at the historic Phillip Island Circuit. Looking forward to that one. That's going to be good. Twin Ring Motegi goes fourth. Then we go to the Nürburgring Grand Prix course. Go to Brands Hatch for round number six. Seventh going to take us to Silverstone. Eighth race on the season. Going to take us to Moe's Sport or the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. Ninth is going to take us to the Indy Road course. That'll be in September along with VIR. And the final two races on the season. Going to take us to Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course and Bathurst. The, of course, famous Mount Panorama Circuit. That's also going to be another interesting race, Paul. We got to see it one year ago and uh, once again, getting back at it here for another season. Yeah, these guys, it's going to be a fantastic season for uh, for this. I'm looking forward to Bathurst because that race that we had last year was crazy with um, what happened there, and uh, that's going to be really good. Just look at the qualifying times as well. Bobby Zelensky pumping in the time there ahead of Tim Classes by half a second. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, temperature today outside is uh, qualifying continuing to roll on here. Uh, it's uh, going to be 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 degrees centigrade if you're using that. Track temperature is going to be 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Wind heading to the southeast at about 7 miles an hour. Humidity 83% here in the skies. Just a little bit partly cloudy. You can see kind of that late afternoon haze kind of hitting the track here. So something to keep an eye out as well. Several on boards we're going to be keeping an eye on this evening. We've got Tour Creek Racing's Bram Rainier's The Helmet Cam, twitch.tv slash uh, T K I L L A B. Uh, we got Off Camber Motorsports. Cr Justin Kruitoff, Twitch.tv slash Falcon 140 stream. And Workiva Kinetic Racing's Wade Hayes, Twitch.tv slash Speed Racer 83. So if you want to take a look at some of the onboard shots, we encourage you to head over there and check that out. But qualifying taking place right now, and uh, right now top of the board, no surprise, he's got the number one plate for a reason. Bobby Zelensky returning to form once again. Yeah, putting an absolute stonking lap there and uh, looking at uh, one more guy, driver on track at the moment, George Gruber, getting his final lap in there, checkered flag is out, so we're going to be all set for the start of this race. 
Yeah, we are, and we're going to head to your race spot TV starting grid once the trucks begin to take the circuit. Let's take a look at that right now. Bobby Zelensky going to start on pole. No surprise there. The driver from the NASCAR Peak Antifreeze iRacing Series going to start on pole. And then Tim Clausen's going to start second, or Clayson's, I believe. Yeah, Clayson's. We're going to have to get used to some new names here. Marco Mor uh, Mogren's going to start third. Fourth going to go to Sven Kamer. It's Wade Hayes going to start fifth. Sixth going to go to James King. Martin Capal going to start seventh. And George Gruber rounds out your top eight. Set the dust next to Rose. Ashley Blakehood with Justin Krutoff, ninth and tenth. Brock Hopkins, eleventh with David Barracla in twelfth place. Thirteenth, Bram Reniers with John Allen rounding out the top 14 in this grid. Yeah, and then 15th is going to go Clifton Cockrell. Daniel Thompson going to start 16th. 17th to Aaron Smith, the second. Kyle Streichar is going to start 18th. 19th going to go to David Applegate. That's your last truck that took a time. The rest of these guys do too late. I believe a lot of them are going to be late confirmations, not uh, not have the ability to qualify in here. So, uh, uh, Jawad Caroni going to start uh, 20th. 21st going to go to Diogo Melro. Uh, Mike Je yeah, my check, uh, Sekowitz is going to start 22nd, 23rd to Samuel Harris. David Crozier going to start 24th. So a lot of new names that we're going to be stumbling over for this week, Paul, but uh, we'll get them into the book here. But getting ready to uh, roll off here, the rough RT12R pace car begins its pace lap here. So it does. It's not quite a full lap here, uh, but these guys just get a chance to get some heat into the tyres going to heat into the brakes as well because the brakes are going to be really important around this track especially down in towards turn number one and turn number four as well those are really key points of this track on this opening lap where drivers can get caught up over each other it's going to be really exciting 24 car tr tr car truck grid uh here for you today you can tell i didn't do commentary on this last season but um yeah i'm really looking forward to this yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, and of course, Interlagos, the home track of uh, Race Spot TV producer head honcho, Hugo Louis, and he's still on the sports car open broadcast, so we encourage the best to them. But going down here, of course, a lot of curbs, and we've already seen some trucks go two tires in the air early on here, so I think I'm expecting it pretty early on. We'll just have to see how they do. But up the hill we come now, last couple corners before the pace car are going to hop off. One thing to note, you look on the track, that white line you're going to see to the left of it, that's pit road entry. You cannot go over there. That's out of bounds. You'll see the pace car kind of duck to the left side of the track. You'll see it right in the frame here as we just come around the corner. With white markings on the ground. You can't go down there unless you are going to pit road. And if you are, you can only go on there. So something to keep note as the trucks begin to thunder their way through the final turn here at Interlagos. The field going to be in the hands of Bobby Zelensky as we begin to kick off the 2018 Sox Out Racing V8 Super Truck Championship. Green flags in the air. Great start, we're already going three wide, four wide possibly in towards turn number one in your mid-pack. Zelensky, good start though from the pole. Everyone else, will they all make it through? And the answer is, uh, it doesn't look like they will do. Yeah, it was a little bit sketchy there. I believe a little bit of contact to uh, Tim Clayson's in that 451 truck, but they're all going to make it through turn number one, a very tight turn number one. So they head down the first straightaway here, the longest straightaway on the circuit. So they're going to come up to this left-hander kink right now. And Bobby Zelensky out to an early lead, about four truck lengths. has got a little bit loose. It was uh, the 451, and he's going to start to fall in back towards Sven Kamertz in that 66 machine. Yeah, the third place 66 machine all over the back of Tim Classon's there as they're heading through the double apex right-hander. Now into this tight right-hander. You want to take as much a curve on the right-hand side there to open up the corner as you're heading through the left-hander and get the car set up for the next tight right-hander, the Pico de Pato. Side by side, racing further back as well. Rembrandt is, is battling with uh, an actual play hood with the new driver, Cesar. And uh, Blake Hood has run wide into the wall. 
Yeah, Blake Hood out into the grass already. That's going to be massive problems for the 82 truck. We'll take a second look at that and was battling side by side with that number eight of Bram Rainier's. And uh, Rainier's, I think, kind of psyched him out a little bit and uh, actually just kind of falls off the track. So not a good way to kick it off there for that driver. But as we cut back to the live picture right now, Bobby Zelensky continuing to lead as the two Belgian drivers right behind him of uh, Sven Kamertz and Tim Clayson is going to battle side by side in the turn number one. Oh, did you see Kamert, uh, Sven there side, sideways going into turn number one there. Got really loose. He's got the inside for cover to Sol, turn number three. But he's going to have to back off a little bit. And that's allowing Tim Clayson now to be able to pull away, just carry that speed out the corner. This is fantastic racing. And all this fighting is just allowing Bobby Zelensky today to go, bye-bye, guys, I'm off. Yeah, Zelensky has pulled away a huge margin already, and uh, Marco Mogren kind of stuck behind all this traffic here as the two drivers from the same place going to battle it out and a little bit of a country rivalry going on right there. So really cool to see, you know, lots of different drivers' backgrounds. You know, Bobby Zelensky out of California, the two drivers out of Belgium, then right behind him, Marco and James King out of the UK and Ireland group. And then we got Central Europe as well and Martin Cabal. So all over the place, the trucks here at Interlagos. They're bringing all the drivers together. Yeah, it's, it, I'll tell you what, it is great to see this, this series just carry on growing. It always provides great action and uh, a 24 car grid. It's difficult to keep up with everyone. This is the battle that's crucial open near the front of your field. And uh, you just look at the queue of cars now, the queue of behind some places now, because you've got uh, Michael Mogger and James King and Kapal. They're all in this queue here. They're all trying to get past. We're all 2.4 seconds behind Bobby Zelensky in the lead at the end of the second lap. And Zelensky out to a huge lead. It's not really that surprising. Um, Zelensky, of course, made a habit of doing this last season and has basically picked up right where he left off, back to turn number one. And Sven thought about it, tried to put a nose to the inside, and wasn't able to do it, but he's still right there. If Blazins makes a little bit of a mistake here, Paul, uh, Sven's going to be right there to steal it away. He, he had a great run for turn two. He's carrying that speed all the way down towards turn number four now, but he's on the outside. He's got to be careful not to touch the grass there because that'll just spit the truck around. These two Toyota Tundras, they're uh, battling it out. Uh, three Toyotas in a row here with the Chevys behind. And uh, these guys, it's, it's intense battle. Oh, running wide there is Tim Clayson's. It's going to be down the inside for Sven Kamaz. Can he make that move stick though? can hang it around the outside here Tim if you're brave but no Sven makes it through yeah Sven a beautiful pass kind of shuts the door a little bit on Clayson's and Kamert's back to that second spot in a very familiar territories for Sven ran a lot of those races last season kind of runner up and uh, stole some of the thunder with some of the great battles he had with teammates and otherwise so keep an eye on that 66 truck as he slips his way in the second and another battle right behind these guys as well actually no it doesn't look like Clayson's is yet done with Sven Kamertz as they head up the hill once again and look at Sven get a huge run I think Tim might have been a little late on the gear shift there he's going to fall right into the clutches of the 257 of Marco Magrin yeah, these guys, it's been fists uh, up and fight as this one. Absolutely nose to nose in towards turn number one. What's the breaking going to be like? They're all a bit on the edge here. Great driving from all these guys at the front here. We will keep you up to date with what's happening further down, but great driving from these guys. They're showing how it works. Excellent car control and uh, making the way through turn number three. Clayson's just getting a little bit better run there, and that's just giving a little bit of breathing space ahead of Marco Mogram. And right to the back bumper comes James King there, and uh, got the braking nearly perfect, but just didn't have quite a good run out there. Kind of got stomped on in the middle of the apex by Mogram's truck, wasn't able to get going, so King had gained a lot of time there, and it looks like he has a little bit better of a corner entry than Mogram as uh, they roll through kind of the S's here up the hill and into this very, very, very sharp right-hander before we have the left and right there as well. Martin Cabal, the 64 truck, trying to make things happen. You can see these trucks fishtailing all over the place. They're not used to this kind of cornering, but that's what we put them through here at Interlagos. Yeah, it's great to see these trucks on road courses. Uh, you only get to see them on road courses a couple of times. Uh, so, uh, really, this series giving us this different race, and it's what it makes it so exciting, this one. And speaking of exciting, 
got to remember, there's a hard charger award that uh, these guys are trying to fight for as well as the uh, race win. Yeah, a little bit different to last year. The, mar the hard charger award going to go between, going to be fought between the driver who gains the most positions and the driver outside of the podium that uh, you guys feel, the viewers as well as we'll have a vote in it as well, uh, who was the most exciting. So keep an eye out on that and drop a name in the comments when the race is done, who you think was the most exciting driver outside the podium. And they'll go up against the biggest mover to see who gets the Sox Out Racing Hard Charger Award. And that driver will see receive a free Three month by analyzeracing.com software. I'll tell you one driver who is uh, making the claim for that boat is your driver, number 13 truck, uh, Joe Corone. Great drive from him, up to fifth, five positions. Uh, Samuel Harris up to six positions. So uh, it's between those two at the moment, but uh, Joe just looking a little, bit, uh, a little bit dangerous here behind Clifton Crock, although it doesn't quite get to the ball right yeah, that got a little bit sketchy there, and Caroni's going to have to uh, open up that gap a little bit. Meanwhile, battle not too far in front of him. The Beast Racing driver, Brock Hopkins. That's a name from my past back in the day. Used to race with Brock and uh, representing Beast Racing, one of the newer entries to the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series as well. And uh, a lot of a lot of racing going on by that team, and uh, they've definitely made their name here in the last couple months trying to get into these big series and putting on a show. So keep an eye on that number 80 truck as he's stalking Bram Rainier as they head down the hill. Yeah, he is a bit of a uh, veteran of the series, really, and um, really has shown a good turn of pace in this truck in the past. Not really uh, where he wants to be down in 12th place. He'll be uh, desperate to try and catch up to uh, John Allen, who is actually a second and a half ahead of him. So, uh, Graham, not too happy, I don't think, with where he is at the moment in the field, but uh, certainly great driving all the way down your field, nobody out the race yet, so that's really good to see. And uh, John Caroni uh, getting pretty close now to Clifton Cockrell, showing his nose in that number 13 truck, not able to make it past it. There's Daniel Thompson, the driver that um, always that seems to get involved in uh, all sorts of excitement last season, he's just stalking behind. And excitement's not always what you want to get involved in, Paul. It was involved in several accidents and stuff, and definitely wasn't the 2017 season that he wanted, but he's back and raring for more right now. And uh, generally, he's one of these drivers that kind of came from the mid-pack and was able to uh, jump into the top five or so every race every so often. So keep an eye on that driver of the 14, and uh, let's see what he can do here as the race pours on. But we're in the pit window now. Uh, Paul, lap six, they said they opened up. That's when drivers can first start coming down to get tires. You got that until lap 21. It's about the longest those guys can oh. go on a tank of fuel is problems. Well, it's George Gruber making the move there on Kapal. He's put it down the inside. Kapal's run really wide there. Ended up losing the place to James King as he as well. The side by side through the penultimate corner here into Junkau now. And uh, Capel having to take that tight line, that 23 truck will be able to carry the speed all the way around the outside up the hill here. But it's going to be neck and neck, it's going to be a drag race down towards turn number one, and it's the 23 of James King that just makes it in front. Just barely as well, but it was an excellent pass by by the driver from Team Bushfink, and he's going to be able to steal that position away, so put that number 23 truck into sixth position, but I don't think Gruber's going to be, or Kapal rather, is going to be quite done with him yet, as uh, Gruber right in front of these guys just trying to run away, but Kapal right still following that driver of James King as they head down the straightaway. If you're going to get a slipstream, it's got to be here, the longest part on the circuit here. Maybe a little bit of a dive. Let's just see. No, he's not going to be able to do a whole lot, but does close the gap in just a little bit as Gruber locks up the brakes and goes way off track. A little bit of an off-track excursion there for the driver of the 123. Yeah, he's uh, having issues there at turn number four. Luckily, there is a lot of runoff there, a lot of tarmac there, so he's able to keep the truck going. Doesn't affect it too much. And just allows those behind to catch up a little bit once again. It does appear that Gruber has not done a bad job. But how, uh, just Locking up that inside front right tyre. Comes unloaded there on that tight right hander heading through this infield section. It's a track really of two different uh, styles, but it's really technical. Middle sector of the lap, and then you come towards the end of the lap, really high speed in the first part of the lap as well, high speed. 
Yeah, absolutely, Paul. And down the down the hill we go. A lot of elevation change as well to, to kind of complement the speed sections of the racetrack. And right now, Wade Hayes got a very good run going down the hill to right to the back bumper of Martin Gapal, and it's a three-truck train there for that sixth position. Keep an eye on those guys. Meanwhile, your top three looks like Bobby Zelensky out to a, uh, he's in another zip code right now. Sven's been able to kind of shake off Clayson's. So keep an eye on those guys as that battle continues on for that sixth position. Kapal closes in in turn number one, and they all accordion together in that slow part of the racetrack. And Kapal trying to get the edge, a little bit of a fishtail there from the 23 truck. Yeah, not the best exit there, although he's carrying the speed here, though. But he is... He's still in the slipstream of the of the truck in front, so he's able to keep the, that top speed up a little bit more. It's not quite as disadvantaged. We've got the first driver on pit road, which is Aaron Smith, the second. He's uh, taking his mandatory pit stop now. Joe uh, Carone is battling away. It's pretty close between him and uh, Daniel Thompson. And in fact, Carone is going to go up into 14th place now. So uh, he carries on his charge forward. Ooh. Oh, Thompson and Harris behind. Harris is uh, also one that's really trying to go for that hard charger award. And uh, he really onto the back of Daniel Thompson there. Thompson is having to be these troublesome situations being as a driver to, to be attacking the car in front but also having to defend the car behind. Yeah, and with the kind of oh lock up a little bit for Daniel Thompson, a little bit of little bit of a tap there to the driver of uh, Caroni, and he was able to hold on to it. And Samuel Harris had a front row seat to that one, and he'll be able to hold on there as they head into the slower left hander here. And uh, you can tell Thompson starting to lock up the tires and a little bit of a fishtail there as well. That good, those Goodyear Wranglers on those Camping World Truck Series trucks can uh, can only take so much punishment. They're not used to this kind of punishment here it's, yeah it's, it's really going to be tricky for these guys they've got to look after those tires the uh, if they can get those tires to the middle part of the race the oh look at the lock up in front that was the eight truck he basically left a huge patch of rubber in turn number one and sorry to cut you off there paul because look at the accordion effect starting to take effect I should say, and Brock Hopkins now going to go to the left of Rainier's, and Rainier's not going to block him here. He'll be side by side oh, in the three. Thompson's run wide as well behind them. So all sorts of action going on here in this mid-pack. It's great racing. Rainier's trying to hold it out around the outside of four and five. He's going to have the inside for the next corner, though, Ferradura, and that's going to be really crucial for him into the breaking zone there. Through there, now you can get the cut back. If you get your line right in that set number 80 car, not able to do it at the moment. But Daniel oh, Thompson. Oh, yeah. Look at Veneers barely holding on to it. Oh, my goodness. What a save by him to hold on to that position. And I think uh, Hopkins got out of the throttle and allowed Caroni to try and make the move. And there goes Veneers again, lighting up the tires. I'll tell you oh, what. he got hit. He, he's, he's abusing those tires right now. He's really struggling with them here and he might want to think about making a pit stop soon around the later just to basically get him some free air. Speaking of um, battling as well, you battle for second place as well is heating up. Look at this now, Tim Clayson has caught up that gap to Sven Kamatz now as they come across the line less than three tenths of a second between the two of them. Yeah, I think he could tell what the sponsor says on the rear of the 66. He was that close. A little bit of a fishtail there. And here comes Clayson's trying to make it work. But Sven is going to have to drive off the corners. They thunder down the super stretch here into turn number three. John Allen heading onto pit road as well. Getting out that queue of traffic that we were watching just a few moments ago. That's probably a smart move there. Get some clean air, fresh rubber. Get some laps in, fast laps in. And you should be able to jump those guys. Yeah, and uh, Clayson's meanwhile continuing. We're watching this battle between himself and Kamertz, and up the hill they come now, and I think Clayson's has been a little bit better on those lower speed corners that you talked about, and yep, there goes the lockup by Kamertz there. That's not going to help his case at all. Is right to the back bumper, welded to it. Stim Clayson's now maybe have to use a little bit of uh, 
dodge him strategy oh. here to get past. Yeah, he does. He hits him going into the turn, and Kamerts is going to be able to hold on to it. Yeah, that's that's really good, and it's really good sportsmanship as well from Tim to be able to just hold back there, not take advantage of it. He's still not done with this one, though, as they head into Junkau. The thing is, Marco Mogren behind is Sven Kamerts' teammate. They may look to be in different team colours here, but they are actually a combined effort between the two of them. So, uh, really, Marco Mogren's bringing himself into this battle, and it could be helping Sven, uh, which, to be honest, I think Sven needs. Ferrari, by the way, is dropping down 15th place now, down to 16th place. Jochen Melro making his way through, he's struggling out of Junkau. And I think he's, well, he's not going to head on to pit road this time. He couldn't. Justin Kruzov, though, does head on to pit road. So pit road now, just going to start getting a little bit busy. It's from lap 11 to 24. And Caroni, what happened? He got very loose right before they started heading up the hill and lost all his momentum. And a couple trucks got past him, as you saw. And he's now falling back all the way to that 20th position. Actually, no, it will be a little bit up because more trucks on pit road. Justin Karutov, Daniel Thompson making their pit stops oh, as well. Ruben wide. Ruben very wide out of turn four. He's struggling, and here comes James King now. Will King give a little bit of a tap? No, he's going to try and make it work on the outside and maybe try the undercut here. It's a double apex, but no, right down onto the racing line goes George Gruber. He knew it was coming, and that only means one thing, Paul. You do that too many times and may just get, uh, you may just get a little bit of tap there to uh, help open up that passing lane a little bit. It's James King's right on the rear bumper. George Gruber shaking the truck around. There it is. Nope, he had to get on the brakes, and King, he had an opportunity and just had to uh, decide to lift out the throttle just a little bit. Uh, and he's probably done the right thing there. You don't want to damage the truck. You don't want to get it dinged up. You want to keep yourself nice and straight, nice and clean to get the best possible top speed. Look at this queue of traffic though behind Gruber. I'm not surprised to see Gruber head onto pit road, really, as, uh, well, Bob Zelensky comes across the lines completely with the lap. And here comes Gruber onto pit road, uh, along with the rest of this truck queue. Actually, oh, no, the 64! What's well, happening to it? He's he into the, the attenuator. Wall. Yeah, he got a little bit loose coming down pit road and clipped the attenuator there was the driver, Martin Kapal. Replay coming up for you on screen. We ride on board on the roof cam, Martin Kapal, and you can see him. It was a late judge by both of those drivers. Look at uh, right in front of him and just gets a little bit loose and oh, just barely scrapes the attenuator, and he got lucky because that could have been a massive accident there, Paul. It could have been a massive accident wiped out a couple of cars there but they're all on pit road now um, also on pit road has been Sven Kemes and Tim Clayson so those two uh, cannot be separated at all the bottom, bottom half of the field now has been to the pits pretty much uh, between these guys and oh, look at the battles coming off of pit road Clayson and uh, Kemes still absolutely together nose to, to, nose to tail Bob and Zelensky, though, is absolutely miles ahead now. Okay, I know it's in the middle of the pit stop phase, but he's seven seconds ahead. Yeah, and uh, the second and third came down pit road, so it's just opened up that gap. How about another zip code? How about a, a different state? That's the gap that Bobby Zelensky has on the rest of the field right now. As he heads up the hill, does he decide to pit this time? It's probably going to be for the best. Looks a little bit left. Yep, survey says. Slip Angle Motorsports. Bobby Zelensky heading down pit road. The number one truck, the defending champion of this series, slows down to pay speed, pit road speed, I should say, 45 miles an hour here at Interlagos. Yeah, it certainly does. We'll see if any of the other drivers come on to pit road. Brock Hopkins is battling with Bram Ramirez. They're going to take this one to pit road as well. So pretty much everyone's making the pit stop at the halfway stage of this race. Of course, these trucks will be lighter because of the fuel that they're burning off. And uh, that means that they'll have, have those tyres last that little bit longer for the second half of the race. Two drivers that have not pitted yet. Uh, Diogo Melro and Magic Sakovic in first and second now because they've stayed out. The two team mad cars, new drivers to the series. Always good to see uh, new teams entering this league. But um, Bobby Zelensky, he's out of pit road now. And he's just coming out behind those two in the lead. But look at that behind Tim Clayson and Sven Kemmerts. 
They're side by side. Kamert's nearly got into the side of them, but they'll drag race down to turn number three, and Kamert's going to try maybe the undercut. First down in the corner goes Clayson's, and Kamert's going to try and get the run off the corner. Sticks the nose in. It's going to work, and no, oh, he's going to be able to hold on to it just a little bit loose. Fishtailed it and holds on there as they head up the hill now. Yeah, they, that was well held from Kimmets uh, because I thought he was going to be uh, all, man, all manner of around there and uh, able to keep it going. That's really good from him. We're on board with him now, and it's through this tight section where he really sort of left out a little bit to Tim Clayson's, but he's able to keep up with him at the moment as they head into Pico de Pato, the right-hander. They're going to head downhill, but there's that slight bit of damage on the back of Sven's car from that little bit of contact between him and Tim earlier on a couple of laps ago. So uh, that might just slightly affect him, although I wouldn't afford too much because it is only the slightest of contact that they have there. As well, the team have cars now onto pit road. As I have to unmute my microphone, that'll probably help. Yeah, both those <laughs> drivers down. And now locking up the brakes there was uh, Marco Mogren. There is, I cut back in front of the drivers who are now uh, coming back to the uh, podium positions here. Bobby Zelensky, Tim Clayson's, and Sven Kamer to your top three. And Marco Mogren is running fourth, George Gruber fifth, and James King sixth here at the, uh, the end of the cycle pit stops. Yeah, really good racing. There's still some pretty close battles on track. It's going to be uh, a really interesting end to this race, that's for sure. James King we're looking at at the moment half a second, although probably could be less than that, behind George Gruber at the moment as they're heading up the hill towards Ferradura. George Gruber really pushing the limits of the track there onto the, uh, the little bit of AstroTurf on the exit of turn number five. And he's pushing it to the limit. And the thing is, those tyres, they'll only take that limit for so long. Yeah, they will, and uh, as King kind of closes in now on George Gruber, we're coming up to about 10 laps to go at the, at the start-finish line, and that'll be for Bobby Zelensky, who's basically just having a very Bobby Zelensky sort of evening so far, is out to a massive lead over the rest of the field. It's five and a half seconds, more or less, and Clayson's continuing to have to hold off Kamerts, though, though the gap is starting to open up a little bit. So closest battle I think right now is going to be that battle between King and Gruber. Yeah, King and Gruber certainly giving us some entertainment here. Of course, these two eligible for the uh, Hard Charger Award. I, I, I analyze Hard Charger Award. Bobby Zlinski, by the way, new fastest lap, 136.418. He's going to be pretty close to that lap record, actually, is uh, Bobby, with lap times like that. So it That beats him. it. Yeah, it does beat yeah, it. No, yeah, no, that actually beat it. So, uh, uh, the track record's 136 flat, but he beat the lap record here. So he, he's going to need a little bit more draft, I think, Paul, if he's going to beat the uh, the track record anytime soon. Yeah, yeah, he needs to try a bit harder. That's, that's all we want to yeah, see. Yeah, he's in only the front. leading by six seconds. I mean, yeah. come on, Bobby, turn it up a little bit. Absolutely, but um, yeah, great racing all the way through. We've got a, a queue of cars behind Clifton Cockrell uh, heading down towards turn number four at the moment. It's Cockrell, Melrose, Blake Hood, David Barraclough. We don't normally see David Barraclough that far down the order, so he's had a, not the best of days here. And uh, then Magic Sakovic at the back of that uh, queue of traffic. But uh, yeah, that is unusual to see David Barraclough so far down. And it looks like something's happened to Martin Kapal because he's on pit road right now. Yeah, uh, let's see if we can try and find out what happened. Good Was that? Everybody. Yeah, no, I, he may have been on pit road for a while, but I just rather spotted him, so I'm not sure what happened. I think he just parked the truck after he came down pit road. Yeah, he was he was running slow. He's got some damage to the front right. So obviously an incident that happened earlier on, and uh, he was struggling with that damage, but he's, uh, yeah, on pit road at the moment. So he was running up in your top five for a while and has dropped 17 positions. So your biggest loser on the night, Martin Kapal, right now. And at least for on track, that award going to go to Ashley Blake Hood, who I, I know I know he races IRL, Paul, but uh, it's not looking good right now for the 82 right now. I'll tell you what, um, yeah, he, 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 well, we saw that mistake that he had at Pico Tapato on that first lap. Biggest mover, by the way, looking like Samuel Harris. Uh, he is up, what, 11 places uh, in this one. 
Oh, Ooh, look at that. Caroni. Oh, he's going to get really loose in a turn number one. He had a very similar incident that he had to earlier. Got loose coming up the hill, and a bunch of those Team Mad Trucks got past him, and he nearly locked up the brakes and got into Blake Hood. Was able to hold on to it. That was real sketchy as we're going to take a look at the replay right now. Yeah, it was. It's, um, well, look at that back end just flick out there. It's almost as if it was locking up under the downshift. Oh, truck, oh, truck off to the side. Brock that's Hopkins. Uh, that's Hopkins, the 80. He's got back up in a room. We'll try and get a replay of that one as well. It's all happening all of a sudden. And you know what? It's a self-spin down at turn number four. Carried too much speed in turn number four. Outbraked himself. Yeah, and uh, did the right thing. Held the brakes there. Waited for the traffic to get past. So uh, good driving from Brock there. Yeah, Brock's able to hold on to it, but will be further back in your field. He's going to fall all the way down to where I can find him. There he is, 19th in the order. Is King right now just going to be able to get past Gruber here uh, on the racetrack. Great pass for him. Oh, well, it's not over yet. They're still side by side as we'll look at the, uh, the aerial coverage brought to you by Angwin Designs, the official reference partner of Racebot TV. Heading down towards turn number one now. They're still absolutely neck and neck side by side down towards the center S. And really, the outside line, it's working for King. But Gruber, he's got to give him space. Gruber locking up a wheel. Still side by side through turn number two. And look who's hanging around behind them. And I think out of all of the drivers, yeah, right behind him is going to be Wade Hayes. But of all the drivers here in this series, I think George Gruber probably goes through the most Goodyear Wranglers out of most of the drivers here as he keeps locking them up. But it worked for him right there as King right to the back bumper. Oh, he's going to move him a little bit there. Slight tap there from the 23. He's starting to get physical here, Paul. Yeah, he certainly is getting physical. It uh, really is intense racing as they're heading up the hill and uh, well it's just going to calm down just that little bit just while they go through this infield section oh look at king he took a swipe that almost looked like he was going for for gruber there and gruber trying to desperately hold on to that truck but he just can't seem to find the traction and king all over the back bumper trying to make it happen oh dive once again he got him that time loosened him up is. It's, uh, this is just allowing all this path following, allowing Wade Hayes to make it up to the back of them now. It's a three trip train as they're heading towards Junk Out once again. And uh, the damage already starting to accrue on Gruber's truck. Both the tire damage. Oh, yeah, look at how Lucy gets going up the hill and able to hold on to a new turn 15 this time. And if there's any tread left on those tires, Paul, I'm not sure it's there anymore as Marco Mogren, meanwhile, was able to get past Ben Kamertz. We're watching that battle. But we'll continue to watch King as he dives it into the Senate this time. Closes in, looking for that move. So he does. He's uh, trying his best. Turns two and three. Unable to, to carry that speed through three. But uh, I tell you what, Gruber's not having to go defensive. He's, he's holding his position for the time being. King showing a nose, but he's not going to make it through. He's holding his position, I think, doing so. Just trying to keep the truck on track, out loose once again. And King right there with the mistake. And you can see Gruber all over the place, basically willing that truck to stay in position as they head up the hill Look to the left side. Nope, King can't get through there. Uh, I don't think it'll be too long before he's going to use the bumper again. Slow down to the first gear, and Gruber kicks the backside out just a little bit, and he'll be able to hold on to it here. As, oh, man, Gruber's trying to force that truck to go where he wants, and I'm not sure how much longer he's going to be able to hold on to that as we get six laps to go at the start-finish line. Yep, so we do. It's uh, pretty intense racing here. Great to watch this intense racing further down as well. But these three, these are the, uh, the big points paying positions. This is where the fight's coming, and this is where it's uh, it's going to be uh, really important as Gruber gets loose once again. Gruber cannot find the handling on that truck, but he doesn't care. He's willing it to stay in that position as they come. Six laps to go at the line. Zorinski's already well and truly gone. Nine and 9.2 at the start finish line. It's now nine and a half as they run live timing. And uh, Clayson's trying to do everything he can, but Bobby Zelensky returning to form here at the head of the field as we continue to watch this battle. And he's starting to get a little bit aggressive with those curbs. 
And uh, as we run these guys here, uh, single file here, we're going to find out a little bit more about our series sponsor, IanalyzeRacing.com. Let's take it away. Well, uh, we had the ad all queued up, and it decided not to happen. So we'll get that fixed for next week as Gruber locks it up once again, and he'll slide right in front of James King as we welcome you back to season, to a brand new season, the 2018 season. The Sox Out Racing V8 Super Truck Championship. Hard on the brakes there is Gruber. He'll hold on to it, but how much longer is King going to let him squiggle all in front of him here as they head down the hill once again? Uh, it's a shame we weren't able to show you that ad, but at the same time, I almost don't want to leave this battle here, Paul. Yep, uh, as I'm busy now on muting my microphone as well. Yeah, it's um, it's been a really uh, intense battle. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed this one. These guys, it's, it's just gloves off, hard charging, hard uh, racing here. And uh, they're making our jobs difficult because there is some close battle going on further down. Daniel Thompson is leading a queue of traffic, 12th down to 17th uh, in your field. Michael Mogren is within a second of 10 places as well. So we're battling all the way through. These three are really close together. And somebody just had a pit road as well. I believe that's David Applegate. Yep, he's back up and running now, but he's a lap down. As we unmute my microphone there once again, do you want to go side by side with that ad? See if we can get that to work? Yeah, we're, we're going to stick with this battle at the moment because it is okay. really intense and it really is close. These guys battling away at the moment. And look at that King, really close together at the moment. And uh, yeah, these guys, they're just leaving nothing to chance, are they? They're just absolutely... Don't look at Gruber. <laughs> It, it's just it's just intense. This is great battling, and um, yeah, it's fantastic stuff. Yeah, and Gruber uh, may as well go to the local hardware store and get himself a uh, John Deere lawnmower with as much grass as he's cutting down. Already onto the cobbles there, taking no chances with it whatsoever. Still sque squealing those tires as he comes out of the corner, just trying to hold on. And I think almost for James King, it's starting to get a little bit annoying because he has better traction than Gruber, but just can't get in front of him. He certainly can't get in front of him. And it's, uh, it's getting to the point now where it's, it's almost getting a little bit uh, annoying for him. It's uh, getting frustrating. He wants to make that move, but he can't do anything too drastic because he doesn't want to get a penalty. Meanwhile, look at the back line. Daniel Thompson, John Allen, Diogo Melro all together here as they go across the line. Melro, Thompson side by side into the center S. Oh, almost contact with the 22 and the uh, 84 there. Through the center S, Miller makes a move on Thompson there. That's all battling for 12th place. And they, were, they all kept it relatively clean, but able to hold on to those trucks. It could have gotten very sketchy there. The 22 had a little bit of an issue going into the center S. That was John Allen behind him. It all accordion together is now the inside. Sakowitz is going to look for a little bit more. Off the track goes Thompson, but he's going to be able to hold his line, but he's going to get challenged now. The 88 to the outside. Yeah trying to make that move around the outside you can hold it around the outside there if you're very brave but you're gonna run out onto that dirty track and uh, you do carry that speed you get the inside line if you keep it around the outside here for this corner oh the 22's off almost contact between them and the 22 what happened to him just went hot into that uh, into that corner he went hot at Crony, meanwhile, has been trying to get places back, and he's going to go too wide. It's too wide in front of him. Allen's all out of shape, and he'll only be able to hold on to it, but still side by side in front of him. It's a huge gaggle as contact there between Crony and the driver of Clifton Cockrell. They'll be able to hold on to it there, and Crony will not give up, dives it into the inside. We'll try and get back alongside uh, Cockrell's there as uh, Allen finally going to get out of the gas and surrender that position. Still side by side behind him. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant racing all the way down here. Great to see these guys going at it. And uh, well, they're heading towards the turn number one. They're still side by side. 
and uh, Cockerell still looking to make the move around the outside there, almost loses it. The car in front, the 22, John Allen once again, but tail end is really coming out there. Speaking of coming out, the 13 is all over the place there. Peroni's had several issues with coming off the corner in his truck being loose. So a chop block there. He's not going to appreciate that at all. It's going to be Clifton. The 27 goes to the outside. That's a good way to make the driver behind you angry. He goes to the outside and Caroni very out of shape right now. And uh, Cockrell still going to try and make it work on what will be the inside here as we head up the hill. Yeah, still side by side. And... Uh not going to be able to make it through there for the time being. They're still keeping it there, though. The 27, the 13 is great fighting between these two. Fifth, uh, 15th and 16th place, and here comes the 82 of Ashley Play Code. Trying to recover! Oh, he turns him! He turns him! And Cockrell right off the front bumper. We'll get a second look at that, and Caroni goes around. I can't say I was terribly surprised by that one, Paul, as the replay comes up for you. And uh, Caroni just, I, he kind of turned right, tried to block him, I think, a little bit, tried to apex out. And, yep, you see the contact right there. Goodbye, uh, goodbye 13 truck. Yep, exit stage right there for him. Hardly ideal, but um, not how you want that battle to end, really, is it? That uh, it, it wasn't um, it wasn't any good uh, to see that one finish that way, but uh, certainly they've produced some great racing. Speaking of great racing, that battle, George Gruber, James King and Wade Hayes still going on there for the time being. Second place, though, battle. There's half a second between those two now as well. So those two getting close together. And uh, that one's not over yet as we're heading in towards the final lap of the race already. And with all the racing that's been going on in this fall, your top four are all where they started. Bobby Zelensky, Tim Clayson's, Marco Magrin, and Sven Kamer. It's all started where they're running right now. One, two, three, and four. Gruber's up three spots. And then James King, same place where he started. He's going to be sixth. Yeah, it certainly is. Look at that, though. Samuel Harris. Great run from him, up 13 positions in this one. Oh, Marco Mogra now has got the run here on Clayson. He's trying to make that move work. Didn't quite carry the speed, wasn't able to uh, keep the car in line as they're on to the final lap now. Yeah, white flag going to be aired this time for Bobby Zelensky. We've hardly shown him all night because he's been so far in front. As he takes the white flag into the center S for the final time, goes the number one truck, virtual two reality machine, and unsurprisingly has been uh, as dominant as always, continuing on down the straightaway as they go as we go as we continue to watch this battle right behind him. Yep, these two. The second and third, not quite close enough to make the battle, but look at the battle for fifth place. The 23 truck of James King all over the rear of George Gruber. Looking at that bumper. I must be sick of seeing the uh, <laughs> that car in front. He's going to look oh, to the inside. He dive bombed it, and yep, there's the contact. I think he got a little bit impatient, and there goes King spinning off, not going to be able to hold on to it, and Hayes going to get two in one quarter. Can he complete the pass on King? No, they'll be side by side. Yep, they are side by side, and uh, these guys pretty close together, not able to uh, get the job done there, Hayes, to get in front of King, but King locking up, but look to your front now. Bobby Lusolenski heading towards victory lane. And Bobby Zelensky basically picks up right where he left off and off the final corner. It's going to be Bobby Zelensky going to be able to take the first win here at Interlagos and pick up right where he started. Zelensky to victory lane. Great drive from Bobby Zelensky there. Didn't put a foot wrong or race. Look at the battle though. Further back, Tim Clayson and Marco Mugren across the line. Who's going to finish second there across the line? It is going to be Mugren. Mogren able to drag race it and sends it into turn number one. He's happy about that one. Gruber off the track a little bit as well in his battle, and he's going to fall a little bit behind. And, yeah, it's all gone wrong for the driver of the 123. It's Hayes going to lose out that time. Wasn't able to get past James King. So we've still got battling further back as well, although everybody's just spread out that little bit. Sakovic was pretty close, but he's dropped back at the end of this lap, so not able to uh, make that move. 
And uh, looking further back, David Barraclaw and Kyle Streichart. They're still pretty close together, half a second, maybe three quarters of a second between them. This is all of a 19th and 20th place. And so Streichart's uh, got very loose there. Yeah, he did. He, uh, he's struggling towards the end of the race here. So uh, definitely uh, been a race to forget for those two drivers, that's for sure. Finishing uh, down the order there. But I tell you what, that's your last two drivers on the lead lap. A straight chat got pretty close to Barraclaw at the end there. But across the strike they go. Well, could we take a second look at that battle for second? Because we didn't, I think because we were taking a look at Zelensky, we didn't get a really good shot at those two drag racing it out. Can we make that happen? Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll try and make that happen here as we uh, try and find that for you. And... Uh, uh, let's just get it back a little bit further back there for you. So it's the battle. We'll go to our aerial coverage, of course, brought to you by Anwen Designs. And here it is then, Classens and Mogram. And look at that. Class has got a big drift at that penultimate corner, heading down towards Jung Tao. And I have a feeling it's going to get a big, big slide on the exit as well. There it Looks is. Like That's, Mogren, whoa, that was a big yeah. switch there. And, uh, and Mogren Mog thought about it too and was just able. He didn't even need to bump him out of the way and just got the pass made and drag race to the line. Uh, it's almost straight out of the NHRA and squeezes him out just a little bit. That's all you need there, Paul. And yeah, you look at that across the line. That's how close that drag race was to the line there. Well, as we finish up that replay, we're going to take a look at your full racing results here and uh, step aside before we talk to your drivers. Let's take a look at your final finishing results here from Interlagos. Bobby Zelensky going to bring home the victory here in the number one truck. Marco Mogra drag races out Tim Clayson's for that second and third position. Sven Kamert's going to bring the truck home in fourth. Fifth going to go to the driver of James King. Wade Hayes going to finish sixth. Seventh going to go to Justin Kruitoff. Samuel Harris going to finish eighth. Ninth going to go to Bram Rainiers. And rounding out your top ten, Paul, it's going to be George Gruber. Certainly is. There, Cisco. Uh, then the... 11th down to 20th, We've got Diogo Melro 11th with Daniel Thompson 12th, really good battle between those two. Mesrek uh, Sakovic 13th with John Allen 14th, Asha Blakehood 15th place, he'll be disappointed with that after qualifying so well. 16th with Clifton Cockrell, Brock Hopkins in 17th, Jawad uh, Caroni in 18th, David Barraclaw 19th, Kyle Strachat in 20th, and just to round it out, David Crozier and David Applegate one lap down, and the two drivers not to finish is Aaron Smith the second and Martin Kapal. And I could see Kapal was upset in the comments. Not sure what happened to him, but he said he face palmed himself, so something happened to that driver of the 64. But we're going to step aside here for a moment here on Race Spot TV and hear a little bit from our sponsors, IanalyzeRacing.com. The car behind me is my Chili Bowl midget, the one that I won the Chili Bowl with. And what's interesting about that is it's actually the car that iRacing scanned that's going to be uh, available to all the iRacing members out there.
back live at the Inner Lagos at Jose Autodromo Jose Carlos Pace, also known as Inner Lagos. Here is the Race Spot TV post race show begins for us here on Race Spot TV and I Racing Live. Cisco Scaramusa, Paul Smith, beginning to catch our breath here after what was an awesome first race here in these Camping World trucks, and uh, more of the same here, Paul, except more racing. It was awesome. Yeah, that was absolutely fantastic, and if that's how the uh, the season's going to go out, maybe not Bobby just driving off into the distance, but if we can have racing like that all the way through the field, then uh, I'm looking forward to the season. It's going to be fantastic. And uh, we didn't get the chance to show it to you at commercial break, so we'll tell you a little bit about them. I Analyze Racing, the official sponsor of the Socks Out Racing V8 Super Truck Championship. I Analyze Racing is the complete iRacing add-on package developed by Jackalope Technologies, motorsport solution providers for over 25 years. I Analyze Racing is the premier iRacing aftermarket add-on. Tightly integrated with iRacing, I Analyze Racing provides you with turnkey data analysis that'll be sure to save precious tents off your lap time. Compare your steering angle break points and shift patterns with other users to maximize your potential check them out today at ionalyzeracing.com ionalyze racing the official sponsor of the socks out racing v8 super truck championship and sponsor of the socks out racing v8 super truck championship hard charger award which is going to go up for two drivers this evening the first driver nominated going to go to samuel harris your biggest mover on the evening up 15 positions here paul we talked a bit off air about who we decided to choose as our choice uh as our candidate for the hard charger award yeah it was it was a really cho- a tough choice for us as well we were, we were split torn between two drivers really because they both put on an excellent display but james king fantastic display from him and uh we we decided to go with him in the end because uh that was uh, a fantastic drive from him in that field and just one more thing i want to add about i analyze uh, as well you've got uh, voice commands as well you can tell the uh, the software what you want doing so if you're coming onto pit road and you're wanting to just change right hand tires you can tell it just change right hand tires and it'll select it for you great piece of software yeah, it's, it's definitely, it makes it a whole lot easier when you're in the car and you're trying to get everything done. And uh, just being able to say it definitely helps out. So your Hard Charger Award nominees going to be between James King and, of course, the driver of Samuel Harris. If you want to throw in your own pick for who you think should be up for the Hard Charger Award, drop a, drop a name in the comments section. And uh, Stephen will get that to us here and be able to announce who the Ra- I analyze Racing Hard Charger is going to be for round number one. But... Enough talking, we're going to send it down to Victory Lane because we've got a driver here who once again took us all to school here on the road courses. It was Bobby Zelensky, and it's, you know, almost like stage winner MTJ all over again. Zelensky, you did it again. You are so fast out here. Talk us through it. Uh, I mean, I really I really don't know what to say. I am kind of surprised um, at the, the speed we had. I Going into the race, I thought it was going to be... Um... Like, I thought Sven was faster than me, and I was just trying to find all this speed in practice. And I'm not sure what happened to him in qualifying, because I know he might have messed up and just kind of got caught in traffic. Um, but I, I was just unexpected, I guess. I'm not, like, I'm not trying to be mean or anything. But, like, I was really uh, concerned about, uh, you know, Sven's speed. And um, so when, you know, when he kind of fell back there at the end, I was surprised. I, I think something happened to him. Maybe he got damaged. Um but yeah, just uh, I enjoy these trucks like always and happy to start in another season. And if this is you concerned about your speed, I'm worried about what it's going to look like when you're confident. So you, you of course, you're driving that number one truck. You are the defending champ here. Obviously, you know, you're concerned into this. You can throw those away for now. What does this tell you about the speed of the truck going into the rest of the season here? Um, I think there's there can be... A couple. I'm. I'm basically. Uh, Christian Challoner provides the, uh, the whole Socks Out Racing League a, a baseline, and I pretty much went with that with a couple changes. I tried doing a lot of the stuff I learned last year, and it was just not working. Uh, the splitter kept hitting the ground. A bunch of stuff happened, so I couldn't really run some of the stuff I ran that I was comfortable with. But that being said, it was still a really good setup. So uh, for for me and John on on the on the Slip Angle Super Truck team here, I'm gonna try to do more research on the set and try to make it a, a better driving truck for both of us. And uh, that, that's something I, I definitely need to, to kind of get better. But um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. 
Well, I'll tell you what, a fantastic run here for you and for your teammate, John Allen, finishes 14th where he started. But after the day he went through, it's uh, it's probably a good thing just to bring the truck home in one piece. So an excellent job by both drivers out of the Slip Angle Motorsports stable. Bobby, sponsors, shout outs. Who gets it done for you and the team? Yeah, big thanks on the uh, uh, sponsor on the car, Virtual Turality Ter TV and Payday GG. Um, coming on board for Sox Out Racing League this year. Really thankful to have them. And... Uh, Thank you to Virtual Racing School, also on the B Post. I work a lot with them in the Peak Series and then Data Packs. You can check that out. Uh, thanks, everyone at SOR. Puts this on. Well, that's Bobby Zelensky gets the victory here from Interlagos. Bobby, we'll see you in a month's time or so. All right. And I'll pass the mic down to the driver who finished second. He's caught up with Paul Smith, and it's Marco Magrin. Yep, so Mark Amogren then joining us. Uh, please ignore the graphics, by the way. My uh, graphics package has gone absolutely haywire. It's saying he's 13th, but he's not. He's second place. Great drive from you uh, in that race, starting off in third place, moving at one position in the race, but uh, may yeah, maybe you're just getting fallen down a couple of places at the start, but then able to uh, catch up to that battle for second and third place. Just talk us through what you could see happening in front of you, because Tim and Sven were having a, an almighty battle. Yeah, they really were. Uh, they were going at it <laughs> the whole race, basically. Um, my um, my strategy really was to just hang back a bit um, because tire wear is crucial in this car. And um, I made uh, my pit stop one lap later, and um, um, luckily they just kept going uh, and battling, going too wide. And I think. Uh, my tires were a bit better at the end. Um, Tim made a, a tiny, yeah, not the tiniest mistake, uh, go, going quite wide uh, there at the end. Uh, but it, yeah, gifted me pit too, so I'm quite happy with it. Well, I was about to say, we, I mean, we ended up watching that one back because we didn't quite catch it live. But um, you must have had your heart in your mouth when you see Tim suddenly just veering, the back end just kicking out there and heading almost towards you or almost towards the wall there. Um, but hey, but it looked like you were going to be trying to make the run on him, and then just had to back out of it, so you didn't hit him. Yeah, these cars aren't that nimble, so you really got to be um, be patient when you try and pass them. Um, it's, and it's a split second decision if you want to go for it or not, because Tim could have very well lost the car there and just taken me out instead, um, which would be been a shame. Um, but yeah, um, he Tim left. Plenty of room. Um, I tried to <laughs> give it back, so it had a he had a fair shot at going for the line, and um, yeah, luckily I I went on top. And uh, well, this season we're seeing yourself team up with uh, Sven, and it's a bit of a collaboration as well, Kinetic and uh, Radicals. You don't really hear of that many collaborations between teams, but uh, you know, really good to see you two uh, battling up there and. Uh, you two finishing second and fourth is a good result for the team. Yeah, um, as, um, I've been teammates with Sven before. Um, he's a really good driver. Um, uh, so, and he has experience in this car. So I really have to thank uh, Workiva Kinetic for um, uh, um, giving, yeah, helping me um, getting pace on the car um, because it's uh, he's done the setup work. And I'm just happy to uh, get in on it. And well, we're on to uh, that's round one done. Anyone you want to give uh, any quick mentions to sponsors? Anyone, how, whoever gets it done for you? Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank our sponsors Esther Simrace, Cranfield Simulation, Six Sideways, and JRT. And of course, uh, Success Racing for putting on this uh, series. And um, to Racebot for giving us a good uh, show. And of course, you've got the race spot logo on the side there, which we all know adds enough for two tenths of a second onto you. It takes off two tenths of a second of a lap. So, uh, well done there, and uh, all the best for the next round. Thank you. Cisco. Yeah, going to catch up now with the driver who finished third, and it's Tim Clayson's and catching up with him now. And it was a long day for the driver of the 451, but Tim, fantastic racing. We saw you be a part of. Talk us through the race, my friend. 
Uh, hey everyone, good evening. Uh, thanks for inviting me here. Uh, well, it's been a, it was a great race. Uh, it was my first one in this series uh, with this car, so I was uh, a little bit afraid of uh, what I could expect from all the other drivers, but uh, I had a clean race. Start was reasonably uh, okay. I had a little bump into the second corner, so immediately lost the gap uh, to Bobby. But looking at his pace after the race, it's not like I would have uh, stick, stuck with him anyway. Uh, after that, yeah. It was just a great battle with me, uh, Sven, and uh, Marco uh, until the end. Uh, my tire wear was a little bit better, it seems, compared to Sven, so I could catch up to him after he uh, overtook me. Um, and I stayed there until pretty much the last corner of the last lap, where uh, I made a little bit of mistake and gave Marco the opportunity to re-overtake me as well. Well, so, I'll tell you what, it was a great event. showing for you. Yeah, it was a great showing for you here at Interlagos, and... Uh, of course, still got plenty of racing on the schedule here for this for the season. How does this uh, how does this shape up? As uh, or was this tell you about the truck and uh, the racing here as we head to Sonoma here coming up in March? Well, I'm usually uh, more of a, a GT uh, car driver, so it's definitely uh, a completely other skill set that you need in this car. It takes uh, a very specific and very special driving style to get uh, the pace out of the car, but. At the moment, uh, everything seems positive. Uh, the drivers seem uh, really fun to drive with. Uh, really close and clean racing uh, on, uh, on this track. So I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. Well, sponsors, shout outs. Who gets it done for you and your team there, Tim? Yeah, we have uh, great sponsors on our Torque Freak Racing Car, uh, GB Enterprises, a tuning company in uh, the UK, as well as uh, Link ECUs which is also a tuning company in the UK who supplies issues for uh, tuned up cars, uh, mostly Japanese uh, cars. They are our sponsors, our main sponsors. So definitely uh, thanks, uh, thank you to them. Well, that's the driver of Tim Clayson's that gets it done in third position. I'm going to pass the mic back down to Paul Smith, who's going to catch up with one of our, uh, one of our drivers going for that hard charger award. It's James King, and he's with Paul Smith. Yeah, uh, that was, without a doubt, the best race I've had in this series so far uh, in the last three years I've been in it. Um, but it's such a shame it ended the way it did. Um, I, yeah, the worst way that could have been, if I'm honest. Yeah, he's uh, he's absolutely brilliant driver. Um, they've last season as well. They were all the talk free guys were really good in the in defence. Uh, I know my teammates last year couldn't get past them at all. Um, and yeah, it was it was getting frustrating because I I knew I had the pace on the infield, but uh, it, yeah, it just never opened up for me. And then unfortunately, I uh, I kind of forced my way in. I'm feeling a lot better than I was a few hours ago, if I'm honest. <laughs> uh, after, after practice, I was thinking I might struggle to ha sort of break into the top 10, but uh, I'm thinking maybe my chances are a little bit better for the rest of the season now. Uh, well, as always, uh, my teammates for, for everything they do uh, in everything I race in. Um, it's obviously to Stephen and the rest of the guys at SOR for providing us with such a brilliant series. Um, as I said, it's my third or fourth year in it now. Um, I do miss the uh, the Xfinity cars we used to run, but uh, yeah, these trucks are still a good bit of fun. Well, thank you very much, and uh, apologies if the technical gremlins have creeped into the sound as well, but uh, we were able to hear James King's replies there, but uh, thank you very much for joining us, James, and uh, all the best for the rest of the season. Well, thank you very much. And I believe we're just waiting on one more interview. So I'm going to grab 
Mr. Sven Kamert. So let's bring him into the broadcast booth. And we talked to one half of the battle between uh, Clayson's and Kamert. And now we'll talk to the other half. And Sven, once again, fantastic battling with you. First of all, welcome back for another season. But talk us through it. That was that was definitely a uh, an exhaustive battle, it looked like, from up here in the booth. Oh, it definitely was. It was a good fun uh, having a full race go green and having this close racing for uh, that long. In the end, I did think I pushed a little bit too hard, but uh, yeah, I'm still happy with the result. And uh, yeah, the, the battles indeed were uh, amazingly tight all throughout the field I hear. So it's a good thing to see from uh, the Socks Out Racing viewpoint itself. And uh, and Interlagos, of course, we talked a bit about it during the broadcast, but it was kind of a uh, a two speed track. You have the slow corners and the fast corners. You were having a little bit of a struggle on the slow corners. That seemed where Clayson's was a little bit better than you, but uh, on those long corners, you just tried to drag it out, and I think it looked like it came down to a battle of tire wear. But talk us through that because there was rubber all over the place by the time we were done. Yeah, yeah, you're 100% correct with that. I was a bit slower in the hairpins, but I had my car set up so I could take the sweepers almost completely flat out all the way throughout the stint. But that did mean I give up the low speed, uh, the low speed corners basically. And in the end, with the tire wear, I did think I pushed just a little bit too hard because at a certain point they just dropped off so much more than I expected it, uh, and and saw from practice. So. Yeah, I think I just pushed a bit too hard, too hard with uh, battling with him, and uh, well, in the end, four plays. I'm still very happy with that uh, to start the season with. I'll tell you what, Sven, sponsor shout outs. Who gets it done for your team in that '66 truck? I would like to uh, thank our main uh, work, uh, sponsor for kinetic racing, which is uh, Workiva. I would also like uh, to thank Marco for uh, for showing up today and uh, providing me with a lot of entertainment during the race as well. And of course, uh, my uh, other teammate, Wade Hayes, as well, was uh, participating today. Well, that's Sven Kamertz finishes fourth here in the race. Sven, congratulations, and we'll see you in Sonoma. Yep. And uh, that's going to begin to wrap up all our coverage here, Paul, and uh, takeaways here from Interlagos. Well, I mean, <laughs> what, what a... Um... What a race that was! It was fantastic to watch. It was uh, epic driving from from everybody on the grid there, and uh, some exciting battling as well in that one. And yeah, hats off to Bobby Zelenskay, dominant driving there in the end. But um, really, the rest of the field they were all busy fighting each other, each other. So he, he had it a little bit easy. He did, and. Uh definitely not the end of the the coverage of stock cars here on race spot tv of course tomorrow you can catch the major series daytona 500 four splits for broadcast catch it on lsr race spot gsrc and v8s online but that'll wrap us up here this evening from interlagos so uh we'll go through everybody we got to say thank you to of course got to thank uh paul smith uh, for behind the cameras and in the commentary box. It was a long day for Paul, so uh, he's going to have a cup of tea after this one. Istvan Bella for the track cams, and uh, you can see the address on there, and that's where you can go if you want to get yourself some uh, quality camera angles. Uh, Andreas Werner there for the uh, for the design and uh, end to -end designs, everything behind the scenes there. Simon Grossman and uh, the whole team at appgeneer.in for ATVO and all the graphics, and uh, Nick Thiessen for live timing at racebot tv slash timing but for everybody behind the scenes in the broadcast tower tonight myself cisco scaramuza and paul smith we say good evening from interlagos and we'll see you in one month's time at sonoma good night how is uh